Now let's start looking at Haskell programs. Uh, first thing we should look at is the structure of a Haskell program. Um, what's a Haskell program? It's a sequence of bindings. Um, a bit later in this part of the course I'm going to introduce other kinds of bindings, but for now we'll consider variable bindings uh, and assume that a Haskell program is a sequence of variable bindings v1 equals e1 up to vn equals en. So there are n bindings here and each of these v's is a variable and each of the e's is an expression. Let's be concrete. Here is uh, the program with, that we saw a little while ago that had uh, a variable hh that we declared to be 53. We've made things a little more complicated. We now added another variable declaration that x is 1. These are declarations of, of variables. Uh, so these are variable bindings and not assignments. To see that these are bindings and not assignments, let's see what happens if we write this. If you are um, a C programmer, you might think that's the sort of thing you would want to do in Haskell as well, but that will not work. Let's see what happens if we save this and send this to the Haskell buffer. Let's magnify this a bit. Uh, so here we have the Haskell buffer. Now let's load the program into uh, the Haskell buffer, and Haskell is not happy. Haskell says multiple declarations of x. We can't have that. We can only declare x once within the same scope. So these are not assignments. This will not work. So let's delete this again. Haskell didn't like it. Let's save. Let's reload. Everything is fine and dandy now. What's the value of hh? 53. What's the value of x? It's 1. Well, of course, there's not nothing interesting going on just yet, but we'll get around to that in a moment. Now, in Haskell, every well-formed expression has a type because Haskell is a typed programming language. And let me show you some small examples of that. Let's return to the program that we already know. We can find out what the type of HH is by typing in the interpreter colon T, HH. And then we're told that HH has type integer. What's the type of X? We can find out by the same uh, query. X has type integer. Now let's make things a little more interesting. Let's have a variable set that we set to true. Let's load the modified program. What's the type Z? It's bool, so it seems like we've got booleans as well. That's not the whole story. The type system of Haskell is much, much richer. And in this session and in the next two sessions, we'll talk a lot more about uh, the type system of Haskell because there's way more to Haskell than int and bool. Um, there's even more than, than strings. We have strings as well. Uh, we could have... Uh, This one, a variable called dyr, which means animal in Danish. Let's load that. Let's see what's the type of dyr. It's list of char. In a little while, we'll see list types as well. Um, list of char means that we have a character type as well. Um, a list of characters is also known as a string. Strings are just lists of characters. Um, so these are the simple types that we have in um, in Haskell, and this, we can also see that there are composite types, um, and we will get round to them in a little while. Well, in Haskell, you don't need to write the types of your variables. Uh, Haskell uses implicit typing. Uh, the system will infer the most general type for an expression. Uh, if the expression is at all typable. Uh, later in today's podcast and in the next section, we'll see what we mean by most general type, because there's a lot going on here. Um, as we've seen now, there are simple types. Uh, simple types are types that are not built from other types, and examples of type Boolean. We can also have composite types. Um, a composite type, that's a type that's built from other types. 
uh, if you have a pair of booleans, um, let's have a look at that. Suppose we redefine set to be not true, but true, comma, false. Now this is a pair. Let's save that, load that into Haskell. What's the type of set? It is bool, comma, bool, which is a pair type. That's a composite type. And later on, we'll see that we can define our own types as well. We don't have to stick to the ones that are predefined, um, but more about that later on. Um, one thing that Haskell does is that it groups types into type classes. Please, 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 this has nothing to do with the notion of class from object-oriented programming. It's just the word that's the same. Type Haskell groups types into type classes. Here are some of the type classes in Haskell. There are many more. There's a type ca class called show, and it's a collection of types that can be shown on output. One of those is the type of characters, char. Um, another is the um, class EQ, the class of quality types. And the show types, that is the types of the type class show, are among the quality types. Uh, elements of an equality type can be compared using the equals operator. So it makes sense to, to, to ask if two booleans are equal or if two characters are equal. Uh, in fact, all show types, all members of the show type class are also in the equality type class. Then there's the, uh, the number type class. It has members such as integer and real. They're among the simple types in the type class of numbers. And moreover, if T is a number type, so it's a member of the type class num, then it's also in the show class and it's also in the equality type class. And finally, we have, uh, as a last example, the class of, of order types. Elements of an order type can be compared using the less than operator. And as we see at the top, it's also the case that elements of an order type uh, can be displayed. So these type classes are all related. And whenever we define our own types, we can specify which type class it should belong to. But more about that later on. Um, you could um, run Haskell from within a command line uh, by, once you've installed it, of course, type ghci, and now you've got the Haskell interpreter, and you could write Haskell expression, here's a very boring one, 4 plus 7, 
Ah, that's 11. But something you could do, which I find much nicer, is to use Emacs. Here's Emacs, the version called Aquamax that runs on a Mac, which is what I'm using. Uh, you could uh, write a Haskell program. It's a very boring Haskell program. Here we go. Uh, I have defined the variable HH to be 53. Um, and I can now start a Haskell buffer. It runs here. And I can load tiny.hs. HS is the suffix for, for Haskell programs. But I can run that in... Um, the buffer, I could evaluate the variable hh, and it's, surprise, 53. Uh, and that's what I like about Emacs, is that you have this integrated and very simple uh, environment where you can have the code in one window and the um, and the Haskell buffer, the interpreter, in, in another. That's that's very convenient when, you, when you're learning Haskell and also later on when you're doing some more earnest programming. So uh, that's my recommendation, but in any case, get a good text editor, and I don't mean Notepad for Windows, I mean a proper text editor, because one thing you'll notice about Emacs is that it's got very nice uh, highlighting, it's got indentation support, all of that, things that you'll be needing for Haskell.